Las Vegas stands up more than 6% this month. The company has been making major moves to its focus, uh, to focus on its growth in Macau. Contessa Brewer is sitting down for an exclusive interview with CEO Robert Goldstein. Contessa. Melissa, thank you very much. And this is the first time, by the way, I've interviewed Rob <laughs> face to face because you took over in the pandemic. We mm. were always separated by Zoom. Mm. So it's so great to be sitting with you it today. Feels good, doesn't it? It does Back feel good. Back in business. You know what else feels good? Being in Las Vegas and seeing this incredible demand. Boom. We just heard from Caesars. They had another record-breaking quarter. Those numbers quarter. are astounding. Caesars, Tom Rigg, hats off to those guys. Incredible are, numbers. So are you having seller's remorse about selling your no, Las Vegas no, property? No, we, no. We'll always be in Las Vegas emotionally. And do I feel bad about leaving the Venetian Palazzo? Yeah, because I was involved in day one with the guys who developed it. But uh, no, we've got other things we're doing with the company. And it puts us in a very strong position to invest more in Macau, more in Singapore. Uh, We'll always have a strong place in our heart for a lot, and the numbers don't surprise me. So really, really doubling down here on mm. Asia, and yet COVID still is mm. such a challenge yes. for a rebound in Macau. We just got those Macau great gaming revenue numbers in from October, down a quarter from the previous mm. quarter mm. because of infections. How do you get over that? Where did, when do you get over that hurdle? Uh, when, I don't know, but I look at Las Vegas as the rebound story. I mean, Las Vegas is the blueprint. Uh, less than a year ago, I was with people that told me Las Vegas won't recover uh, for four or five or six, maybe the end of the decade. And I listened to these people. I thought, I don't believe that. Well, here we are in November of 21. Las Vegas is 20, 30 percent above of pre-COVID numbers. We're doing record numbers at the Venetian. Everyone's doing record numbers. Uh, Tom's numbers are extraordinary. Uh, Vegas is the blueprint for Asia. Once the vaccinations are, are uh, resolved, once the government's opened the doors up, we're opening up in Singapore, Macau will follow. It, it's, it's as simple as that. Uh, the doors open, people want these products, and Asia will follow Las Vegas's lead. That's when, you, simple. when you announced earnings, you got a tough question from one of the analysts about mm. these licenses, and there it's called concessions, mm -hmm. that are coming up for renewal. Right. Um, and he said, well, you know, how sure are you that you're actually going to get a concession renewal in mm. Macau? Mm. You were pretty bold in your answer. Um, here's my take. We've been in Macau for 20 years. Uh, we've been operating since 2004. We've invested $15 billion and built 30 million square feet of real estate, uh, retail, restaurants, casino, hotel. We have 27,000 employees. We've been the leader in non-gaming. 95% of our investment is in non-gaming product. To me, that bodes very well for our future in Macau. We've done everything the government wanted us to do. We've been working with the government for two decades, and we have a good relationship. But more importantly, our track record, I think they, they know what we've done. And we'll stand back and watch the process. We believe very, very adamantly that we will be relicensed and life will go on in Macau. We made uh, $3.45 billion pre-pandemic, and I think we'll go back to that. Uh, let's talk about Singapore, the single let's. most important, financially speaking, property in the portfolio. Mm. Uh, and I know that there have been some lanes that bring in a yep. little bit more traffic. Where are you going to see a rebound in Singapore? I think Singapore's first half of 22. I think Singapore is laying the groundwork. The government there has been extraordinary in working through the COVID. We're still struggling right now in Q4. But I think in Q1 and 2, the rebound begins. The lanes are opening. I think they're opening Australia. They're opening, I, I believe, Korea. It's all going to happen. As vaccinations climb to 70-plus percent, higher percentage of vaccination in Asia than the U.S. right now. So that's just the door opener. The lanes follow, and the business will come back. People want these products. And the same people who said, oh, Vegas won't come back. Now they're saying that about Asia, and they'll be wrong again. And you're sitting on this mountain of capital now. Where do you deploy it? Well, we've got big plans. We want to deploy it in Asia, uh, mostly both in Singapore and Macau. And as you know, we're looking at things in the U.S. as well. But our first, uh, our first stop would be because the, the investment opportunities in Macau and Singapore are still extraordinary. We've done very, very well. These, are, these assets are irreplaceable. You're hoping to get on the ballot with an initiative in Florida. We just saw sports, bowling, uh, sports betting roll out there. Mm -hmm. Texas has been a big lobbying effort on your part. New York is a big lobbying effort. Mm. Of those three, um, which is the most important? And do you, do you have confidence about any of them? Uh, I think all of them are going to happen. Whether we are there or not, I don't know. I think New York is inevitable. It has to happen here. I think Texas at some point, we hope so. We believe in it. It's an amazing market. I think we have a chance in Florida. I do. I think Florida is, is ripe for an opportunity. Um, we'll be in all three of those hunts. Whether we win or not depends on um, what happens. But we'll, we have the capital. We have the appetite. 
um, we have lots of money to deploy, and we're going to be investing globally to maximize return for shareholders. Rob Goldstein, thank you. Thank you. Melissa? All right, Contessa, thank you, and thanks to our uh, guest, Las Vegas Sands CEO, Rob Goldstein. Tim Seymour, where do you stand on Sands or any of the other casino operators? I'm long. I'm long, and I've been long for a month, and I, I think there's a case here. If you listen to Rob Goldstein, I mean, the confidence doesn't come from, hey, I know what's going to happen in China. It's that we've been compliant, but not only that, we're, we're invested throughout, uh, throughout Southeast Asia. Singapore, Marina, Marina Bay, Sands is a huge, huge property. Um, selling Vegas assets puts them, I think, in a, in a great position. And, and, in fact, a question I might have asked is, are you thinking about buying back some stock? And he may or may not have to or, or, or will be able to answer that question uh, in, in, in a lot of different circles. But the company seems very confident on what they can do. They're moving aggressively into digital assets. They're well positioned in Asia. Um, and if you look at the Macau numbers from last month, they were up 32 percent sequentially. We know those markets are going to open up. It is about the license concessions, but um, this stock is way too cheap. You cut the multiple in half, you're 10 percent above COVID lows. Come on. Uh, this, this is a great opportunity.